In our last note, we reduced how to express desires and outcomes in a linear regression or regression problems in general to a few small equations. This lets us calculate what's going on and relate what we want to what's happening very well. Now, as we know, we call the outcome yi, and this is a number, and we try to predict it given our explanatory variables xi. xi is a vector of numbers, y is a single number. Now, we were interested in the expected value of this quantity. The idea is, if one makes an investment, we want to know how much money we were probably going to make. If a particular instance of an investment makes a little more or a little less, that can make us make poor decisions. We want to make decisions based on what was supposed to happen. What actually happens is a bit of noise, which we can't ignore, we, but we call it risk. Now, using our formulation, this equals, just by substitution, f, some function of xi, plus an error term. Now, one of the beautiful things about expected values is they're linear. So this itself equals the sum And we're essentially done. f is a function. It's deterministic. So this just equals f of xi. This error we've assumed to be mean 0 for other reasons. And again, we use that assumption again. So this goes to 0. So this function, f, the unobserved tr generative function, is actually reporting expected values, not instance values like y, because it literally misses the error term. Now, the really neat thing is our fit function formulation, where we use a little f, and again, this is now the residual, not the error term, but this is equal to y by definition. It goes through the same linearity. We know that ri's expectation is also 0, and we get through the same argument f of xi. And this is the function we estimated. And this is the super important property in regressions, that the regression doesn't predict actual instance values yi. It predicts the ideal or expected value. So this is, at best, a denoised version of what will happen. And that is another argument of writing down the prediction as a functional form plus a noise term. We can model the functional form, f little f imitates big F, and we have to take the noise off and then model that as risk. So this is what the investment should return. However, by ignoring the risk, we've ignored the variation or variance, which is why we deal with the residuals or the errors separately and measure them, because they are a notion of risk. And that is how you decompose a regression.